Hello, hello, welcome back to Underrated Movies. I'm your guy, I'm your man, Mr. Alton Henry. Today I'm going to talk about the film Bardo, False Chronicles of a, of a Handful of Truth. And it's a unique art house uh, drama Netflix film which has the similarities of Birdman. It's a story basically about a journalist slash documentary filmmaker trying to just navigate through his life and his personal struggles and you know foundation so you're basically watching a biography i i believe from the filmmaker himself i think um or maybe somebody else and um <clears throat> what i really believe that this film this is my first time watching it. i didn't get the chance to see it in theaters but what i really think about this film, I think um, I don't think it's Alejandro Iritu's best movie, but I will say it's probably going to be a film. And from what I've already seen from the um, award selection, it is going to be one of those movies that are pretty that, that is pretty much going to get swept under the radar. And um, and I see it because this is a film that's not going to be for everybody because this to its core, it's an art house film. I don't know what the budget of it was, but it feels very. It feels very like mid two thousand, like old school, kind of like through like from like two thousand three to like two thousand and seven or eight around that era of films where they would emphasize more of art house films for uh, best picture awards, <clears throat> and it feels like it's an er film that that came from that era, and it actually kind of missed that era of movie making and stories where it focused more on experimental things. To a degree, okay, I'm not saying all, you know, they're, that they're all going to go all for it, but to a degree, I thought this film had a throwback to those kind of movies back in the day. I feel like if, um, I feel like a film like this, if we were still in a full studio control, if Netflix wasn't around, I don't think this film would have got made. Um... I'm not going to mention the performance. Everybody was great. Everything about this film was I thought was beautiful. This is probably Iritu's most beautiful film. Because the cinematography and the imagery and the surreal sequences that take place in this film is just mind-blowing and, and, and just amazing. I'm kind of curious how Iritu filmed that and just came up with this with some of these ideas. I thought was just amazing. To its bonkers, this is a comedy. It's a very surreal comedy, and it's actually kind of right up my alley. Where things kind of just seem weird and into just headspace. And there's actually a twist that kind of happens kind of at the very end of the film. And it kind of explains why everything is happening or why you're seeing certain things in this film. And you won't get to it until like the input of the film, which I won't spoil, but it's a lot of symbolic, a lot of sim uh, uh, symbols, a lot of what just it's happening to this uh, to this character and what the character is trying to balance from traveling to the U.S. and coming back home to his origins in Mexico and balancing the culture dynamics he facing and seeing that transition happening to his to 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 his um to his kids and seeing that they're more adapting to the american philosophy than ignoring some of their cultural roots and then he also deals with the treatment of being a U.S. citizen, and you see that, and then you see these unusual dynamics that that, that has that happens in this guy's life, and it's very visually brought up, and it's very unique. I haven't really seen a film like this in a while, where it's very artistically profound, but also. Um, just, just very, just very, maybe pretentious is the word, but just maybe very experimental. And I think it's a rare film that we've, that we've gotten. It reminds me a bit with Terrence Malick's movies where they feel 
it feels more like you feel more what's happening to the film than trying to decipher what's what's happening as a just a narrative level but it's interesting to see what this main character goes through or what he is thinking when he is dealing with his personal struggles and i love the visual effects i love and i could tell they try to not use a lot of cgi but they use cgi to kind of enhance the environment and it works extremely well it's probably one of the better films that i believe that bound to cgi and in real life and using it to help create the environment around around and create and creates this 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 big cinematic uh, experience this is not a film for everybody i'm just tell you straight up right now this is not a film for any general audiences and i can tell you based on from the look of it it is getting overshadowed by a lot of other films um is this Alejandro's best movie yet again? I mentioned no, but I think this is his more experimental and probably going to be one of his more overlooked movies to um, out of his career. And uh, anybody that, that is looking for, uh, I would say, like an art house film or something just to be more, I guess, a more visually inspecting film, I would say Bardo is the one for you. And I do recommend checking it out if. If, if you're a cinephile, uh, Bardo, the falsified hood of, of, of some sort of truth. Have you seen it? Comment below. Let me know if you have and let me know what is your favorite underrated movie.